welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras, here with the latest news from Israel. Today, Israeli police raided a settler yeshiva in the West Bank, arresting six students for attacks against police and Palestinians. This is the second time this week that police have raided Od Yosef Chai Yeshiva in the settlement of Yitzchal. Last week, police raided the yeshiva in the middle of the night, arresting two students, including a 14-year-old suspected of being involved in riots during the evacuation of the illegal Amona settlement. The yeshiva in question is considered highly controversial since rabbis from there gained notoriety after publishing Torah Tamelech, or the King's Torah, outlining the halachic, more religious conditions for when it's permissible to kill non-Jews. Last month, a number of youths barricaded themselves in a synagogue and attacked Israeli security forces with stones during the evacuation of the illegal Amona settlement. Hamas is believed to be stockpiling highly explosive short-range rockets. The Israeli army has reported that the rockets are more powerful than the last rockets used in the 2014 Gaza war and could have a more devastating effect on Israeli communities bordering the Gaza Strip. According to the IDF, the new rockets have the range of a mortar shell but have a much larger explosive yield than any other short-range rocket that the terrorist group has used in the past. During the 2014 Gaza war, the Iron Dome was seen as a game-changer for protecting against rocket attacks but fell short against mortars and other short-range projectiles. The IDF also believes that Hamas has been experimenting with drones to carry out surveillance and to be used as unmanned aerial suicide bombers. About two months ago, the army put out a statement that Hamas has restored its military capabilities to its pre-2014 war strength. The Navy has just announced that it's doubling its fleet of seafaring Iron Dome batteries. Four ships have been equipped with eight Iron Dome systems, allowing each ship to shoot down a total of 40 rockets. The ships will make use of the Barak-8 surface-to-air missiles being jointly developed with India. The seaborne anti-air missile defense system will in part be used to defend Israeli natural gas platforms in the Mediterranean Sea from rocket attacks. The Saar 6 class Corvette ships are currently being built in Germany at the ThyssenKrupp shipyards and the first one is expected to be operational as early as 2019. The ThyssenKrupp company is part of a police investigation concerning the Prime Minister's lawyer David Shimron. Shimron is currently under a criminal investigation for his role in the submarine affair, in which he's alleged to have been working for the German shipbuilders while simultaneously lobbying the Knesset to contract the shipbuilders to build submarines for the Israeli Navy. Likud Knesset member Yehuda Glick is petitioning the High Court to overturn an 18-month ban on lawmakers from visiting the Temple Mount. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu banned legislators from the site in November of 2015 to try and defuse tensions with Palestinians over the increase in lone wolf stabbing and car attacks against Israelis. At the time, many of the lone wolf attackers had falsely believed that Jerusalem was planning to change the current status quo of the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount is believed to be the place where the first and second temples were built. Muslims, on the other hand, believed the site to be where Muhammad ascended to heaven and returned to earth on the winged horse Burak. Jerusalem, along with the Temple Mount, was captured by Israel in 1967. However, the Temple Mount is currently under Jordanian custodianship to avoid offending Muslims worldwide. Despite being the holiest place in the world for Jewish people, visiting hours for Jews are severely limited, and Jewish prayer or religious artifacts are strictly forbidden. Big news is coming out of the jam-packed three-day conference annually held by the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, or APAC, as United States lawmakers reveal at the conference their plan to prove the U.S.'s commitment to Israel. How are they going to do it? by creating bipartisan-backed legislation that would hit the hardline Islamic Iranian regime with a new wave of sanctions, while simultaneously continuing to enforce the JCPOA Iranian nuclear agreement. The new legislation, co-sponsored by House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy and Minority Whip Steiny Hoyer, targets Iran's ballistic missile program. The Iranian regime has been regularly advancing and testing their ICBM arsenal as they believe it doesn't violate the JCPOA deal. The deal explicitly states, however, that advancing weapons programs capable of delivering nuclear arms is still forbidden. The bill would put a stopper on the flow of finances headed to Iran from both Iranian and foreign companies who have a stake in the missile program. The banks that back these companies would also be targeted. The Trump administration has already expanded sanctions against 25 different people and entities in Iran in response to their recent IBM testing. Bipartisan supporters of the newly proposed legislation ask that the president go further. That's all for now. Stay tuned on ILTV.TV for our main daily broadcast playing after this. I'm Aaron Porras and see you next time with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.